Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's Legendary Encounters. Today it's going to be the Battle of the Six Inch Cruisers. It's the USS Cleveland versus the IGN Mogami. Officially, Cleveland was listed as a light cruiser, and for Mogami, well, the debate's still going, I think. Um, but in Dreadnoughts, I had to have them both as heavy cruisers, because otherwise it just wouldn't work. Now, considering that the heavy cruisers both have pretty poor range, I'm going to set it to 13,000 meters. And that should be a bit more interesting than watch these things close to each other for a while. Starting with Cleveland. Um, Cleveland in this game is not all I wanted her to be. The reason for that is that you have these turrets, these five inch guns, and they have to sort of be crammed in behind the main armament of 12 six inch guns. But that's not too easy. Initially, I had this thing reversed, so facing the other way, like this, because otherwise it just doesn't fit on the hull. And these 5 inch guns, well, they're not quite supposed to sit here. The main reason being the whole superstructure for this heavy cruiser is not quite right. Whether you go with a heavy cruiser or a light cruiser hull doesn't matter. The main tower is, well, I couldn't get it to fit right. But then again, this is a game, not a simulator. Her main armament, 12 6-inch guns, and these fire every 9.6 seconds. That's the fastest I could get them with autoloaders. They fire the US 6-inch Super Heavy AP shell. Um, currently, I'm still on version 1.04, and that means that we cannot set what sort of Super Heavy shells, whether it's AP or HE, but we're going to mostly fire AP probably with this ship. She has a Generation 2 radar with stereoscopic rangefinder, which makes her pretty damn accurate. With this ship, um, you're going to also get a bit of torpedo protection, which she might need. Actually, let's set this to reinforced bulkheads. What I found interesting about the Cleveland is that she has a triple bottom hull. That is going to relieve quite a bit of torpedo damage, as well as uh, reducing torpedo flooding chance. Although it still says to do, so we might not actually see that. As for the rest, um, standard barbette thickness. The ship can get up to 32.5 knots. Regular trained crew. I gave her some gimmicks here, like an advanced propeller shaft, uh, an auxiliary two engine. Considering she came fairly late in the war, I'm going to give her some leeway with some more advanced tech. Now, she has these five inchers. Um, they're not that likely to do a whole lot of damage in a normal fight, I would say. But when she's facing Mogami, which is a pretty poorly armored ship, she might actually have some use for these. But we'll just have to see about that in battle. Time to switch to the other side. Let's have a look at Mogami. Mogami's design is closer to reality, but this ship too has problems in Dreadnoughts. Her main armament consists of 15 6-inch guns. This is the pre-refit Mogami, because she was later changed to have 8-inch guns. She also has a modern tower, and she's supposed to have two 5-inch, um, well, ball turrets, for lack of a better term, these, these circular things, on these plateaus here. But that sadly does not fit in the game. I really dislike that because it would have been nice to have these on those platforms. I tried fitting a different tower. Um, it just wouldn't fit. I could not get the, the tower. Oops. I could not get the tower and the funnel and the secondary tower and this six inch gun. You just don't have a whole lot of room, sadly. Her stern, two more six inch triples giving her far more firepower than her American counterpart. This is potentially going to be important. Um, she also has torpedoes. These are 24-inch torpedoes. Pretty decent firing arc. It's going to depend on how much Mogami is going to maneuver during the battle to see whether these are going to be useful. I made them the oxygen-type torpedo, which I think is accurate, but... After some looking around, I couldn't quite get the right answer, so I'm sure that somebody is going to know that. Who's watching this video, let me know down below in the comments. As for her protection, um, because there were quite a few comments on previous IGN ships saying, well, the Japanese didn't have the best armor quality, I've decided to give the Mogami Krupp 3 armor quality as opposed to Krupp 4, which translates into a little bit less armor quality and thus little, uh, less of a bonus to her armor scheme. She has autoloaders, putting these things to fire every 7.9 seconds. Uh, that gives her even more reload. 
or rather uh, faster firing guns than the Cleveland. The reason for this is that the Cleveland fires the super heavy shells and that takes more time to load. Now Mogami and Cleveland both had torpedo protection. Um, I'm still not exactly sure whether this is supposed to be Torp 1 or Torp 2. The ship could fit Torp 2 and I suppose that that's, well, in this case against the torpedoes it's not really going to do that much because the Cleveland doesn't have them. So we're only looking at floatability and resistance, which is 1.5% bonus or 2.5% bonus. It really doesn't matter that much. What I found a bit tricky with this ship is that while she has all this firepower, she does not have a radar. So she's not potentially going to be as accurate as Cleveland. And that might be Cleveland's saving grace here. Her armor is trash. Just downright trash. She has 4 inches main belt. Um, and that's supposed to be 3.9. I just could not get it any lower than 4. The game said, nope, 4 is the minimum. You're not getting any less. The same for her turrets. She's supposed to have, don't laugh, 25 millimeters or 0 0.98 inches of turret armor. <sighs> you poor thing. Um, something so much as sneezes in the general direction of your turret and it might pop off. That's going to be a problem. These turrets are so poorly protected that I very much fear for their longevity. As for conning tower and superstructure, I couldn't really find a whole lot about this. So I set them at pretty low numbers. And while well, the deck armor is not really going to be anything to ho write home about either, because we got 1.4 inches. What I'd like to know from you guys in the comments who know far more about the ship than I do after my research. Did she have an all or nothing armor scheme? Or a turtle back? In this game, it doesn't matter that much because it doesn't simulate the whole sloped armor. Um, you just get some different modifiers, but overall, it doesn't matter that much, except for flash fire uh, chances and spreading chance. And, well, you get minus 30% ammo detonation chance or minus 60. Considering her fragile turrets, well, the fragility of the entire ship, I'm going to go with the all or nothing scheme. If that's wrong, let me know down below and I will gladly adjust it for a future video if the Mokami makes a return. Now, I think I covered everything. Let's put the Mokami up against the Cleveland, uh, both heavy cruisers, light cruisers, whichever you prefer. And let's see which one wins this fight. We should immediately be in range because we can fire out to 15 kilometers. The Mokami is 14.2 away. Immediately Cleveland opens up and has 1.1% chance to hit. That's probably better than Mogami. Although Mogami might not actually be in range yet. As I'm looking at Mogami, maybe she hasn't even detected the Cleveland yet. Because she's currently not even turning her turrets in the right direction. And the Cleveland already managed to get a partial pen on the Mogami. And there's another one. This thing is so fragile that I think the Cleveland could finish this fight pretty quick. Pretty quick. But let's see if I'm right. If Oh, there we go. Now the Megami's in range. That's about 12.1 clicks. And she's opening up. Her torpedoes already have range. And the Cleveland, I didn't give her any hydroacoustic station, so she's basically going to have to look at the water and see if there are any trails coming your way. Um, the torpedoes could prove to be very, very, very nasty to the Cleveland. Because, well, she has a torpedo belt, but a 24-inch torpedo can do extremely nasty things to a light-slash-heavy cruiser. Cleveland, for some reason, sailing in straight lines. Not exactly sure what that's about. Also, showing quite a bit of her side. But in her case, it doesn't matter that much. Because she has a slightly better armor belt and better armor quality than Megami. So she has that going for her. Lots of shells just clunking off the side of the Cleveland. Yes, clunking is now a word. Six blocked. Can the Cleveland say the same? I don't know. How many ricochets do we have? Yeah, one blocked, three ricochets, two partial pens. 
10 kilometers out. The Cleveland is slightly slower than Magami. And it seems that that might help her. Oh, these ships probably have way too many bulkheads. They both got maximum bulkheads, which I think is a bit generous to their designs. But, well, we're in battle anyway. I might still change it for the second round. See if there is going to be a different outcome. Although that would... Well, it would severely disadvantage Cleveland. Because if she reduces her bulkheads and she gets hit by a torpedo, then um, it's potentially good night Cleveland. Because that will probably flood her out. Now, nobody's doing anything here. Mogami has torpedoes in the water. She's already sent out one salvo and is almost reloaded for the second one. Um, I don't think I can spot them. So that means we're just going to have to let Cleveland potentially not get hit. But has she not been sailing in a straight line for the better part of the last 10 minutes? What's your range? 23 kilometers. Okay. 3% chance to hit, 3.8% chance to hit. That radar rangefinder is helpful. Not even that helpful. Megami's burning. Chance to pen from Cleveland to Megami. 1%? What? That bad? Ah, oh, you got a 4-inch main belt. You can't pen that. Not at 10,000 meters. Yeah. But the deck, the deck is 1-4. So effectively, let's say 2-8, 2-9. You should be able to pen that. No, you can't. Wow. I suppose that the odds in reverse are similarly terrible, if not worse. Let's check. Megami. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be a long fight. <laughs> At this rate, this is going to take forever. <laughs> Neither of these can damage each other. Oh, man. Megami has some fire issues. <laughs> it's basically after damage taken. It's fires. She's just burning. She did drop a few more torpedoes not too long ago. And Cleveland is just her derping in a straight line. Seems like your average World of Warships player. Um, those torpedoes? Let's see. No, they're hostile, so I don't think I can spot them. Friendly torps you can usually just visually track. Anything? No. Mogami still has plenty of torpedoes left. She still has 12 more. She has 2,169 shells. 1,800 aboard the Cleveland. Oh. Oh, dear. Cleveland spins out of control in panic. We got two torps there, two there, and two there. If the Cleveland overcorrects... Oh, no. Oh, dear. You dummy. Well, they literally went out of their way to get eaten by a torpedo. Causing five compartments to get flooded. Two engines are damaged. Buoyancy, 80%. 70%. Dumbass. 60%. You could have avoided this. 56, 55. Holding, 54. 52... Well, we're going to have to do a lot of cleaning. 50. She's dealing some damage in return, but... Her super heavy 6-inchers are struggling to deal damage against the Megami. I think she's firing AP now, but it barely makes a dent in the Megami. Which is interesting, considering that... Well, a run-in with a ship would probably sink the Megami with that little armor. How did the Cleveland mess that up so bad? Just complete overcorrection on her part caused the destruction of most of her bow. 
And this means that Magami, even more so, has a very good opportunity to position herself. Her chance to pen is 12%. Cleveland? 7.8, but it's going up. 8%. They destroyed a secondary gun. That's the bow 5-incher that's down. Magami has torpedoes at the ready. But I think she's angled too steeply to get her torpedoes to fire. For now, that is. Damage to the main tower on the Cleveland. That's going to potentially cost them some accuracy in the future. But due to the damage instability... Yeah, her accuracy has dropped to 5%. Her damage instability is 44%. She's definitely no longer a stable firing platform. And Mogami very much is. She might not have the radar, but she just got so close that it doesn't matter. Mogami, however, is making a bit of a mistake getting this close. Because Cleveland is getting increasingly good chances of penning Mogami. Mogami, similar to Cleveland, 18%. Cleveland's belt is still out of question. Cannot be penned. But her funnel, one of her funnels, just got destroyed. Six, no, five kilometers out. 26% chance to pen the Megami with every shot. And the Cleveland can fire pretty quick. I wonder if the port side torpedoes on the Megami have been destroyed? Because I did see a notification. Hold. Yeah, that one's dead. This one's functional but doesn't have the angle. The other side looks to be a little bruised but otherwise fine. Okay, so the Megami has torpedo launchers on the port side. Although Cleveland, at this speed, is going to do some... She's already drifting, isn't she? Yeah, she's drifting a little. Ship is seemingly slightly moving sideways through the water. Or is that just me? Could be me. Let me know down below. Is that me? <laughs> or is this ship already drifting sideways? Magami, what are you doing? 50% chance to get penned. Cleveland, 19%. But Cleveland's flooding. Rudder. And her conning tower has been damaged enough to take it out. Accuracy for her is 9%. For Magami, it's 37%. Cleveland continues to try to turn to port. But in doing so, dismisses her own A and B turrets. They cannot fire. Whereas Megami has a perfect opportunity to do all sorts of damage. Cleveland's getting battered. Megami, not so. How is the Megami winning this whole battle with this little damage taken? I mean, the torpedo impact on Cleveland pretty much finished her. Or at least seriously reduced her chances of winning the battle. But not this bad. Secondary tower has been destroyed on Cleveland. Uh-oh. x turret got destroyed. Um, this B turret is looking damaged but not dead. Torpedo in the water. Cleveland, are you going to fuck this up? Or no? Yeah, she's going to fuck it up. She should have just turned starboard. Sailed right straight in between the torpedoes, but no. She did no such thing. And the torpedo clips her. In the area that is not flooded yet. So it looks like Cleveland could be down for the count. 7% buoyancy. Yeah, she's sinking. She's down. Cleveland's been destroyed. Megami <laughs> really did not take a whole lot of damage there. Yikes. Damage done? 565 by Cleveland versus 5,500 by the Megami. Okay then. My turn. I'm going to take manual control of Cleveland. And I'm going to see if I can do better. 
All right, we're gonna load the high explosive because I don't think our armor pen is that good yet. We're gonna do some zigzagging to avoid any incoming torpedoes. And we're gonna slow down to full speed to boost accuracy. I think Mogami at this point might have already launched her torpedoes. Although the angle of the torpedo launchers means that they're currently hitting the hull. So probably not yet. Six and five inch guns opening up against Megami. Megami is at a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to her secondary armament of five inch guns. Because she's supposed to have four more. Two double turrets. But I decided against giving her those. Simply because they wouldn't fit on the hull. And she already has torpedoes, which in this case have proven to be very useful. Now I want to close in against the Megami. I'm going to continue to zigzag a bit. At this range, five kilometers out, that angle, maybe do some AP. Doesn't work, we can always switch back. Flooding. Destroyed a torpedo launcher. And I'm only using half my firepower, essentially. And Megami has sent torpedoes, but a while ago. Oh, there goes my pen chance. No, it's not that bad. It's 50% still. We'll stop. I have double geared steam turbines, so I'm very cautious not to wreck my ship. Look at this. She can't do shit. 20% chance to pen. It's slightly going up as we close the distance, but my chance to pen is causing all sorts of issues for Megami. Boom. More floodings. Engine out. This thing is getting wrecked in no time. Now, of course, I don't think Cleveland in real life would have had to close to 700 meters to pull off this kind of a result. But this thing is getting butchered. I have to be careful, though, not to sail into the other torpedo angle. Because that could still get me killed. Uh, pen angle's terrible. Although we could angle... We could pen her stern up quite a bit. And she's making life easier. By just angling towards me. And thus not throwing her other torpedo side into the fight. Or not yet, anyway. Rudder damaged, fire aboard, two engines out. <laughs> this thing. What are you doing? Oh, you're launching torpedoes my way. That's what you're doing. But she's been turning so much that her guns are having all sorts of trouble keeping track. Or... Yeah, no, they're still rotating. I thought they were stuck for a second, but we're fine. Cleveland had to do a bit of dodging there, causing her guns to go off target as well. But we're back. Now, I don't mind trading fire for a little bit. But not too long. I just want to set enough floodings and then turn away. So that that pen chance goes d right down to 40, 30, and then ideally nothing. But in the span of about... 20 seconds, 30 seconds in game, we did about a thousand damage. Cleveland, let's dance again. Look at this. It's just. Having the ship under player control makes such a vast amount of difference in this game. <sighs> if only the devs would give this game multiplayer, I think they would have such potent game on their hands because the AI is one of the biggest flaws of this game still as you can tell one of the ways that you can just reduce the problem of the AI is not having it or not needing it by having players in control of ships how that would work I don't know I'm not a developer I have some ideas but I'm sure that you guys have more. So let me know down below in the comments. How would you balance out a game like this in multiplayer? 
you give uh, points that you can use to buy components. Um, would you have people unlock, if you will, certain classes of displacement? Would you have uh, 130,000 ton battles to sort of balance out the fact that you can have massive battleships? How would you do that? Let me know down below in the comments. And of course, also down in the comments, if you have any further ideas for battles, I'm all ears, let me know. Just post it down below and I will have a look. I sacrificed a little bit of my ship here. But I was kind of waiting for Megami to flood and then she stopped flooding. And there she goes again. See, now I did 4,500 damage and Mogami did 500. It's really down to who controls the ship. Mogami's down to 1% buoyancy. 1%, 1%, 1%. Finish her. Cleveland. Come on. Do it. Twelve percent? No, you're gonna break down your structural integrity first, aren't you? Oh there goes the buoyancy. And she's dead. Okay. Um normally I would stop here, but I'm gonna do another round. I want to see what happens if I control the Mogami. So I'm going to switch to the Japanese, and they're going to switch to the Americans. We're going to load the battle. No, we're not going to load the battle. We're going to design the ships. I will take the Mogami. The AI will take the Cleveland. And we'll have a go. Now my ship is fragile as fuck. Could you not launch torpedoes without my say-so? That'd be great. My ship is fragile as fuck, but if I can use it as a big destroyer, uh, lob high explosive at the Cleveland, maybe knock out an engine that way, and use my torpedoes for pure evil, then I can probably sink the Cleveland fairly quickly. Range is 12.5. There we go. We're actually in range now. Oh, and I also have to rely upon the sheer stupidity of the AI to run into one of these torpedoes. So I'm just going to chase my own torpedoes. Never catching them, of course. Already damaged the funnel. Let's slow down. The no, actually, I don't want to slow down to full. I want to maintain full speed. Because that's going to put me in torpedo range closer. Or torpedo range faster. Cleveland's going to definitely not get hit by those. Well, I say that. And then she does a full starboard turn and still runs into them. Four kilometers out. 3, 6, 3, 5, 3, 4, 3, 3. When did she see them? Two four. Two one. One eight, one seven, one six. You still haven't spotted them? There. One one. That's when she detects them. And now the AI is going to throw the rudder hard to starboard. Full panic mode. No, she's going to turn to port. Okay, fair enough. That causes those torpedoes to miss. Throws off her aim for at least a little while. Identification complete. Chance to pen me. Shit. Okay, chance to pen her. Not, not necessarily shit. 14% is workable. Bow and stern. Oh, she's angling away again. Her speed is 32.5. Mine is 35. Or rather, her speed can be 32.5, and it currently is. Um, I feel that with the Megami, it's a bit of a trade off between the angle that you take. Because I would love to bring all of my 6 inch guns to bear, but that requires broadsiding. That I don't necessarily want to do just yet. Fireboard Cleveland. I've already taken damage to my fire control? Wow. That's fast. Cleveland's chance to pen me. 8%. Yeah, it's all superstructure damage that they can do. Range 7-1. Let's rush in. Torp the guy. 
Normally I would probably use the torpedoes, as this few of them as zoning tools, but in a 1v1 you can probably use them as a kill weapon. Are we just not hitting or not penning? What are we looking at? This is high explosive damage. There. Six, eight, six, seven. She's going to get more deadly. 9.8 though, still. My chance, 15, six. Humor me, AP. Because if I can flood them a little, right through the stern, for example, I can slow them down. I can force them to turn and play my game instead of just chasing down a Cleveland for hours on end. No, this is not doing anything. Back to high explosive. If I turn to port, throw out the starboard torpedo launchers, the ship's going to detect that and either turn hard to starboard or hard to port. Hard to port would be good. Hard to starboard would not. Mm. Either way, I need to slow down. Torpedoes away. Six kilometers out. Own ship speed, 34.6. Their speed, 31.8. So we're closing, but at three knots, it's not going to go very quickly. Damage their superstructure. One of the five-inch guns got knocked out. We're getting somewhere. Cleveland is definitely going to meet up with those torpedoes. Does anybody guess what she's going to do when she spots those at about 1.1? So here. This is not good. This is not necessarily good. This could be good. Cleveland should start to respond right about now. Yeah, she detected them. Turning hard over to starboard. And back to port? No, you idiot. Although this is not necessarily bad for me, because she's turning in my direction. Yep. We're going to have it out now. Armor piercing. Her guns are thrown off target. She's trying to veer back, but I gained about a kilometer with that maneuver. That's good. 20% chance to pen. 12%. I'll take those odds. Come on, Cleveland. Just stand and fight, you coward. Another 5-inch gun got blown up. Starboard one. Stand and fight! Proud Americans. Right. And the Americans are probably going in the comment section. Yeah, but we would have already dive bombed it. I know. You'd like your dive bombings. A lot. It's fine. No, we wouldn't have dive bombed it. We would have torpedo bombed it. Okay, fine. <laughs> torpedo bomb it all you want. But I don't see your torpedo bombers anywhere here in this game. Three kilometers out. Come on, Cleveland. Stop running. Our pen chans are fairly even now. That's not what I want. I like the advantage. Armor piercing. 20%. And she turns away again. I think she really does not want me to come alongside. But she doesn't get a say in this. Two and a half kilometers. If she gets hit by my torpedoes, it's GG for her. She has no say in this. Our shells are definitely getting more accurate. There's a funnel destroyed. Ship's burning. 28, 3 knots. Range 2, 1. Torpedoes are off. Chance to pen, 19. Chance to pen, 19. Even. Range, 1.9 kilometer out. We're almost there. Destroyed a torpedo? 
No, you don't. Destroyed main gun? That's better. 50-50. Love the armor piercing. Yep. B turret got destroyed. Not that she's using it. I'm not sure what it is about the AI and running away, but they seem to do this consistently. Because previously, it was the Magami that was running away. When the AI had control over both of the ships. Funnel, yeah, I already know the funnel's been destroyed. Flooding. On the rudder. 1.4, 1.3. Damage to my main tower. I don't care. At this range, I'm not going to miss anyway. 1.6. Come on. Now we're flooding as well, right through the bows. Flooding controlled. Maximum speed, 33 knots. Her speed, 25.2. The sad part is, she's probably still very maneuverable. 20%. 19.5. Turn to port. This is IGN Magami. To use as Cleveland. Surrender now. And you'll be taken prisoner. Don't surrender now, and there will be no survivors. I hope I still have torpedoes. Yes, I still have torpedoes. They might not hit, but at least she's going to force her into a turn. Oh, yep, she's got that. Uh, there she goes. <laughs> Two torps. You did. Job done. So, Cleveland, KIA. Uh, that really didn't damage me too bad. 919. In the Cleveland, it took less damage, but again, it really goes to show it really matters who controls the ship. If it's a player, it definitely makes the battle a lot more lopsided. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your engine... What your engine? I saw engine. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. And I'll see you guys soon for more videos.